geometric distributions by hand? Ain't nobody got time for that. That's why today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do it on this guy. So stick with me and I'm gonna walk you through all the steps to plug a geometric distribution probability question into the TI Inspire. Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni and this is Probability and Statistics. Now as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at the geometric probability distribution functions on the TI Inspire. Now there are three ways to access that and I'm going to show you all three today along with the two types of functions that it offers, which is PDF or CDF for the geometric distribution. And we'll talk about what each of those means and how to use them in actual real life examples as well. So first and foremost, how do we get to the geometric distribution function on this calculator? Well, we're going to go into the basic calculator function of the TI Inspire. If you don't know what I mean by that, it's either just the calculate button right here, uh, and that will take you to the scratch pad version, or I usually like to use the actual document calculator, which is this guy right here. So if you click on the button in the bottom left-hand corner from the home screen, then it'll bring you to a clear document. Once you're here, the way you get to a geometric distribution is through the menu. Now you can do it two ways through the menu, or you can do one coding it by hand, and we'll talk about that one a little bit later. But let's go ahead and jump into the menu. Now, I don't like to have my students memorize certain codes or numbers in the menu, because a lot of times when you update to a new version, some of those codes may change. So I don't want to say like do menu 662 or something like that, because it might switch out. So instead, let's look where it is actually located using the words in the menu. When you're looking through here, there are two places to find it. Either one, you can find it here at option number five, probability. When you go into there, you can actually find all of the distributions as the bottom one on this list, and you'll see all the different type of distributions we can do on this calculator. We need to scroll all the way down to the bottom by just hovering over, and you can see we have geometric PDF and geometric CDF. We're going to start off doing the PM geometric PDF, but let's go ahead and look at the second way we could have found this. If I go back to my original menu, you can see here in statistics, number six for mine, also has a distribution section. And those distributions are actually the exact same. So when you're going in, you could actually choose probability or statistics, and both of them will have this distribution menu, and you can jump down to geometric PDF or CDF. I'm going to start today by looking at PDF, and this is where we're going to jump into our first example. It says there's a 20% chance of my one minute ACT prep video getting picked up by YouTube Shorts. And they wanna know what's the probability that the first one to be picked up will be the third video that I release. Now, if you didn't know, shameless plug, I release a one minute ACT prep video every Tuesday and Thursday to help you practice for your ACT. So if you wanna raise your score, go ahead and click the subscribe button below. But back to the actual question, we went into the geometric PDF function of the TI Inspire. Now, what is the difference between PDF and CDF? Well, that's where this example is gonna help us understand. PDF is when you are looking for one X variable. And remember, on a geometric distribution, you're actually finding how many attempts to the first success. So if the question is asking for a probability where it just wants to know how many attempts to the first success, for one individual number, in this case, the third attempt, then that's a PDF question. But you'll see in our next example, when you're dealing with a range of numbers, you use the CDF function instead. And what do I mean by a range of numbers? Well, that could be something like, what's the probability that the first one's released in any of the first two? Or what's the probability that the first one to get on the shorts list is any video after the fourth one? Those would be a range of numbers, and that's when you use CDF. So let's go ahead and jump into doing this one with PDF. There's only two things your calculator needs here. It needs the probability of success, which it said was 0.20 or 20%. You always have to put it in as a decimal. Don't put it in as the actual percent number. And the X value is three. That's what actual attempt we're looking at as our first success. So I plug in three and I hit enter to see that the answer for that would be 0.128. In other words, there's about a 12.8% chance that the third video I release will be the first one to be picked up by YouTube Shorts. 
Now the next question is very similar, but notice it says that the first success will be one of the first two that I release, which means that I'm gonna be looking at the probability that it could be the first one or the second one. So even though it's a small range, this would still be considered a range of numbers, which means we're gonna be able to use the CDF function here instead of PDF. So let's take a look at where that can be found. If we go back into our menu, remember it was in the same spot, either probability or statistics. We wanna go to that distribution menu and scroll all the way down to the bottom until we find geometric CDF for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and click there. And again, it's asking for our probability of success which we said was 0.20 because we always list it as a decimal. And in this case, it gives us a lower bound and upper bound instead of just one X value to put in. So I just said that if I'm looking at it being one of the first successes, that means or one of the first two, that means it could be the first one or the second one. So I'm gonna make the lower bound right there one, and I'm gonna make the upper bound two because that means it can be either the first one or the second one. So it's going from one to two. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And that tells me that the answer is 0.36. In other words, there's a 36% chance that one of my first two videos will be the first one to be picked up by YouTube Shorts. So we're gonna look at one more example today because there's a little trick that I want you to be aware of. So if you look at this question, the only difference here is instead of being either the first or second one, it now says we're looking at the probability that it will not be one of the first three that I released. That means that it could be the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one, or any number after that all the way off into infinity. So instead of looking from just like one to two, we're actually looking from four to infinity, which means this is still a CDF, but how do you plug infinity in? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. If I go to my menu, we're still going to address it the same way. We can either go to probability or statistics and go to our distribution menu. And again, we're gonna go and scroll all the way down until we get to geometric CDF. I'm gonna click on that to go in. Again, our probability of success is still gonna be 0.20. But our lower bound here, we said the first one that is not in the first three would be four, and we wanna go up to infinity. Now, it is a lot quicker to not worry about looking for an infinity symbol or something like that. Instead, we can just choose a number that's really, really high up there, because anything beyond that is gonna essentially have a zero probability of happening. So once we hit that threshold, it doesn't really matter anything after it. So I'm just gonna pick a really large number that represents infinity for me. In this case, since we're talking like four as our lower bound, a large number will probably just be a few nines in there. Now, I usually aim to put about five nines, but if you're dealing with a super large number, then you may wanna make your nines a little bit larger as well. But in this case, five usually does it. Very rarely have I seen a question where having five nines doesn't constitute what we need for infinity on an upper bound. Now, if you ever needed to do a situation where your lower bound was negative infinity, you could do the same thing of negative nine, 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 nine. Um, but for the most part with geometric, you can't go lower than one because you can't be successful on your negative fifth attempt at something. So in this case, we really only need to use this for the upper bound limit. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay here. And you can see it gave me all the probabilities and added them up for the fourth attempt up to nine, 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 nine which is infinity for me. So in this case, it looks like our answer is gonna be 0.512 or a 51.2% chance that the first video I release to be picked up by YouTube Shorts will not be in the first three that I release. And there you have it. That's how you do geometric distributions on your TI Inspire. Now remember, if this content was helpful in any way, shape or form, go ahead and hit the like button below. That helps me out and lets me know that this type of content is useful for you. Also, if you wanna keep getting videos like this one, go ahead and click the subscribe button and you'll see my new videos each and every week. Remember, my name's Daniel Caproni and this has been Probability and Statistics.